I would like to focus in today's presentation about the what I call um, the phenomenon of the Poland uh, quick maturation as an EU member state. Um, I will argue um, uh, during these remarks that um, in the past 10 years of being at the table, Poland grew from the position of the junior partner uh, to the status of the key member states that today um, uh, actively co-shapes um, European uh, policy. After having elaborated briefly um, of the most evident examples for me of this Poland um, maturation as a member state, I would like to, um, to outline the major factors that solidified um, Poland's credibility on the European Union stage. And finally, um, I would like to sketch a little bit the challenges ahead of foundations of our Polish-European policy. And if the time allows, maybe I would like also to offer some recommendations on how Poland sh should review its original European strategy to successfully address those challenges. Uh, my remarks will be based on the works that we've developed together with my colleague and my uh, coordinator, Roderick Parts, in recent months and the papers that, we, that we've published. So first of all, let me please start with the fir first point. Um, in my opinion, Poland really did enter into the new um, uh, membership cycle as a credible and viable partner. I think it still raises the eyebrows of some commentators that back in 2004 perceived the CE countries, Poland uh, and the others, as a troublemaker, uh, makers and the claimants of other uh, solidarity. But today, and I think it was also rightly mentioned in the report that was published um, uh, by, the, by the Polish MFA um, on, on the, in the report of the Polish 10 years in the EU, Poland is very often perceived um, through the prism of its triple role, through the prism of the regional leader, through the prism of the member of this influential big six group, and finally um, through the prism of the country that successfully builds bridges between the northern and southern Europe thanks to its well-established regional cooperation also with the Baltic and, and Nordic countries, but also thanks to the fact that it has relatively, um, it, it, it went unscuffered through the, um, through the severe um, uh, sovereign debt crisis and the economic crisis. Of course, uh, the, image of, uh, the, the, the image of Poland as a constructive player uh, would not have been possible if it wasn't for its ability to form stable coalitions. Um, with the other member states. Um, and the extent of this uh, normalization, I think, of the pol po uh, Polish normalization on the EU stage is also proved in the statistics um, of the EU voting procedures. If we look at the EU voting procedures, you will see that Poland and other CE countries, they blocked in the Council far less than they were first expected and far less than the, uh, all the member states did before the um, uh, the big bank uh, enlargement, and maybe I will give you a couple of examples of the um, of how Poland managed to form those coalitions, um, and I think that one of the most spectacular is of course the formation of the um, uh, Friends of Cohesion Policy Group um, uh, in the negotiation in the uh, multiannual financial framework negotiations. Um, and this group um, uh, that consisted also of the other Visegrad um, countries uh, was one of the most vocal uh, players um, uh, in, the, uh, in the negotiations. And actually out there, Poland managed to perform the leader of this group and also managed to maintain the co cohesiveness of the group despite the fact that some of its members also flirted with the group of the uh, net players. Um, moreover, Poland in the last years has not shied away from also taking up initiatives, which also proves, in my opinion, the consolidation of its member states, the, uh, the maturation. Um, and, well, the most recent example is the uh, European Energy Union that is being promoted as one of the initiative, uh, mm. initiatives uh, that Poland is um, uh, one of the leaders. Um, it is also a result, of course, of the discussions uh, of the March European Council um, a council summit that encouraged member states to, 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 to come up with some uh, constructive <clears throat> ideas. Also during its um, EU Council presidency, uh, Poland promoted the idea of the democratization, um, not only in the eastern uh, countries, but also in the southern neighborhood that led to the formation of the um, European Endowment for Democracy. 
Um, moreover, uh, what I find uh, pretty uh, crucial is that Poland also managed to have its voice heard in the issues that have been traditionally in the domain of the uh, Franco-German tandem, um, uh, such as the Future of Europe debate. Um, and Poland, together with, the, with Minister Westerwelle, co-chaired the, the gatherings so of the Future of Europe group. This group, um, uh, this group consisted mainly of the old member states and mainly of the Euroins. Um, well, also in the last years, since the sovereign debt crisis broke out, Poland has been really successful in gathering support of its euro area partners for the so-called Euro Plus formula in the economic uh, governance. And together with the other pre uh, members, it managed... Um, so far to, um, to safeguard the cohesiveness of the, uh, of the project. I think that the fiscal compact is one of the, um, of the most relevant examples. Poland, has been, Poland was very active in promoting the provision of the fiscal compact, saying that within five years the, the, the wording of the fiscal compact should be incorporated um, into the EU law. Um, and I think also that the Euro summits, um, uh, and the Euro summits where <coughs> Poland and other pre in member states, and in fact also the, those that are um, called outs, uh, Euro outs, uh, they can participate in this Euro summit uh, despite, I think, the, the big reluctance in the beginning of the French uh, president's, uh, President um, Sarkozy. This is another example of um, uh, successful. Uh, successful efforts. And the last example is also the, uh, the, the banking union negotiations and what Poland um, has successfully managed to, um, uh, to, to, to safeguard was this notion of the close cooperation uh, in terms of um, a, a single supervisory mechanism that allows not only Euroins but also pre-ins um, to participate in the decisions about the executing the prudential supervision of credit um, institutions. Now, um, let me please m move uh, to, the, uh, to the external factors that actually solidified Poland's position on the, uh, on the European Union stage. And the first one, I think, um, it was paradoxically a sovereign debt crisis that strengthens Poland's hand um, in the EU. Um, first of all, the crisis shifted the attention from the east-west cleavages that were associated still with the eastern uh, enlargement to the north-south divisions. And I think it developed a very favorable ground for Poland to better mark its presence um, in the EU, particularly, um, uh, uh, particularly keeping in mind that um, Poland managed to made it through the worst phase of crisis relatively unscuffered. And uh, to, to give you an example, um, in 2013, Poland's GDP grew by 20% against the figures from the 2000, uh, 2008. And I also think that all this has made Poland a partner of choice, not only for Germany, but also uh, on occasions even on France, that has been a <coughs> traditional supporter of more intergovernmental Europe, of Europe that it's not um, a, a particular vision that we would support. We would definitely support a more um, a community method in, in, in favor of um, developing the European project. And I think that Poland has also benefited all over these years, particularly in the last years, from certain weakening of the Franco-German uh, Franco tandem, because both uh, key players started to reaching out to the partners outside the, uh, the euro area bloc. And uh, whereas Berlin has helped us to spawn the, the, the term pre-in, um, which strengthens uh, our hand in negotiations on developing a genuine economic and monetary union, France, under the um, President Hollande Steers, seem to have cooled a bit its neo-Gallist um, thinking. And finally, as a last factor that I would like to, uh, uh, to, to, to point to, which affected our credentials, this is the, Pol uh, the Poland's chairmanship of the EU Council. And I would like to focus here on a very specific dimension of our presidency. Um, uh, uh, Poland managed during its presidency to smooth the interinstitutional relations with both the European Parliament and the Euro uh, European Commission that have been uh, rather tense since 2010. 
And the institutional tug of war uh, has been diffused uh, thanks to um, uh, po Polish efforts in, um, uh, in more regular and structured form of Parliament's involvement in MFF negotiations, but also thanks to the compromise that was achieved, for instance, on the correlation tables. Um, uh, the, the, of course, these are the uh, interinstitutional intricacies, but they gave a new pace to a legislative process. Um, and actually, this this well, this interinstitutional relations, um, this very specific dimension of Polish presidency, leads me to the final point of my presentation. That is the fundamentals of the Polish European uh, uh, policy and the challenges ahead of them. Um, and I would like to stress that this this is the strong partnership of the community institutions that has always been at the heart of the Polish European policy. And we've been um, a strong support of the uh, Monet. Uh, logic, because we believe that uh, the communitarian, uh, Poland believed that uh, uh, communitarian institutions were called up to safeguard the integrity <coughs> and coherence, um, and as such, both uh, European Parliament and the Commission um, have been strategic allies um, in, 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 in building bridges between Poland and the other um, Eurozone members. But as you, um, as you know, the sovereign debt crisis put these fundamentals uh, of the Polish European policy in the test. And it has not only pushed towards greater uh, intergovernmentalism, but also to the, to the forms of the Eurozone cooperation only. And, um, and Poland, um, uh, uh, Poland faced the limitations of its traditional um, European strategy. This, uh, this limits of the supranational, uh, supranational influence um, on the Eurozone governance became very, very clear already during the Polish presidency. And the fiscal compact... Uh, was one of the, uh, of the most evident example. Um, another watershed moment for Poland's traditional EU strategy based on the supranational relations were the negotiations, this is my perspective, were the negotiations on the single supervisory mechanism, uh, a first pillar of the banking union. Despite Poland's expectations that the parliament would promote the interest of the non-euro area members, maps from the econ um, committee, if you reviewed the base, uh, actually tied the council um, uh, compromise as too favorable for non-euro area members. Yeah? So just this is just to give you um, uh, just to give you an example of um, of the limitations of the supranational um, uh, institutions. And um, just just to um, just to sum up because I know that I am running out of time. Um, I think that this last decade um, uh, gave rise uh, to discussions that by abandoning its traditional partnership with the EU institutions and embracing more intergovernmental Europe, Poland could branch out more for itself. And this becomes particularly tempting in the light of its already well-developed bilateral um, uh, relations with the key EU partners, but also in the light of growing Poland's, I would say, uneasiness with some of the Commission initiatives. One of the examples is, of course, uh, Commission's uh, attempts to regulate shale gas or um, the revision of tobacco products directive. But I would argue that following this path would be very harmful for, for Poland um, because Poland still remains in this kind of a liminal stage. It is not, enti it is not euro in, but it is not entirely euro out either. Uh, it is legally obliged, legally uh, obliged to enter the eurozone. Thus, I think that it still needs its two-track uh, strategy, which is based on the both community methods. Uh, that is then complemented by the governmental uh, partnerships to limit the risks that are associated with the um, with the process of further um, uh, uh, eurozone uh, eurozone integration. And um, I think that this strategy is likely to be tested very soon. I'm not sure if this is being discussed in Ireland, but this is definitely something that is being discussed in Poland. This is, uh, the, uh, this is the new EU Council voting system that is entering into force from the November uh, 2014. Of course, we'll have this transitional period, but I think that this strategy of both, you know, this two-track uh, two strategy will allow uh, Poland to establish more favor favorable grounds um, uh, uh, in the EU Council, um, which 
which, as you know, first gives a preferential treatment to the larger member states, but also in, in theory, it also it might facilitate further eurozone consolidation. Uh, and as such, the strategy and, and, and as such, Poland will need both. It will need both strong uh, communitarian institutions, like strong commission, which will, in a way, diffuse a possible caucus of larger member states already in the pre-legislative uh, phase. But it will also need a solid network of intergovernmental partnerships um, to which it could reach out first if um, um, if, uh, uh, if the euro area decides at some point um, act, uh, to act on bloc. Um, I will finish here. Of course, I'm, uh, I'm uh, very happy to answer all the questions and maybe also to develop a little bit on, on those major points. Thank you very much indeed.